Welcome to Entrepreneur SOS with your hosts, Sandy Calling and Monique Moll. We help business owners navigate the often complex world of system, organization, and structure. And every week, we bring you expert advice or real-life stories from successful entrepreneurs who have overcome the challenges of building and scaling a business. Whether you're just starting out or looking to take your business to the next level, this is the podcast for you. So join us each week and let's grow your business together. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. It helps us to reach more entrepreneurs like you. And today, I'm really excited to introduce a very special guest, Brad Yates. Brad Yates is known internationally, and I, I know his wife personally, so this is the first time we're meeting virtually, and she was telling me Brad's on his way to Russia, and he's on his way to Ireland, and so he's really internationally well-known for his creative and often humorous use of emotional freedom techniques called EFT, and also known as tapping. Brad is an author of several books. He's been a presenter at many events, and uh, he has over a thousand videos on YouTube and that have been viewed over 42 million times. Goals, money, goals. Right? I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this guy's no joke. And more <laughs> info is available on his website tapwithbrad.com, but I'm going to put everything in the show notes. Brad, thank you. Thank you for being with us today. I know you are super busy with all your travels. I actually saw you're headed out of town again in a few days to go to various cities. So we're really glad that you took the time with us today. Before we get into the meat, share with us a little bit, because not everybody knows what is EFT <laughs> and tapping and how it can help people. <laughs> yeah. So you put these metal things on the bottom of your shoes and uh, <laughs> you'll click. Where do I get them? It's very entertaining. <laughs> yeah. And there's a link on my website. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. I always am grateful for opportunities to share this, especially with folks who have never heard about tapping. Emotional freedom techniques, EFT, or as you said, tapping, which is what a lot of us refer to it as is literally a process of tapping with our fingertips on particular points, primarily on the face and torso. And for those of you who are new to this and are thinking, what? <laughs> I thought Sandy and Monique had like real tools for entrepreneurs. <laughs> what is this wound? <laughs> it's, I understand that response, but there's a really good reason why. We... Tapping originated from acupressure. So acupuncture has been used for thousands of years in Chinese medicine. They've said this flow of energy goes through the body along these pathways that are called meridians. And when this energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well-being, physically and emotionally. And when this energy gets stuck somehow, we don't feel so good. And when we don't feel good, we don't think as clearly. And when we don't think as clearly, we don't make the best choices. And as entrepreneurs, we want to be making really good choices. <laughs> so that stuff, that stuck energy can really harm our careers and our lives in general. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the doctor would stick needles in these key points around the body or apply pressure and acupressure and help stimulate that healthy flow of energy. So that's what we're doing by tapping on these points is we're stimulating those points to get that energy flowing. That's the original basis of it. Now, there's a lot of theories about how it works. We have a growing body of scientific evidence validating that is a profound stress relief tool. So when you consider that most, if not all of the problems that trouble us physically and emotionally are either caused by or worsened by stress, then you can see how a simple stress relief technique can be so beneficial in every area of our lives. Can I ask a question around the oh. meridian points? So is there specific points that are for specific things or are they all equally as effective? Excellent question, Monique. If you look at an acupuncturist map of the human body, the, the meridians are up and down the body and there are points all over the body. There are scientific studies now showing that these particular points are beneficial and they've done double blind studies tapping these points that we use versus what are called sham points, points that are not uh, along meridians. You can actually take a galvanometer and measure that there is lower electrical resistance at these points. Oh, wow. And wow. in traditional acupuncture, 
the meridians are generally associated with different organs of the body and different organs are associated with different emotions. So the original version of tapping that was discovered by a psychologist named Roger Callahan, he would identify which points were necessary for particular emotion. So for instance, the eyebrow point is associated with sadness, the side of the eye with anger, under the eye with fear. So depending on what was going on for the patient, he would tap maybe three or four points in a particular algorithm. And then one of his first students, Gary Craig, who had his degree in engineering, thinking like an engineer, how do we simplify this? And <laughs> okay, there's only eight <laughs> points that we're tapping overall. It takes less time to tap eight points in a row than to try to figure out which points to tap in which sequence. <laughs> and so that's when he, that's he called funny. his process emotional freedom technique. It was a more simplified version. Now it all makes sense Thanks. watching one of your videos. Excellent. So Thank I, you for clarifying that. Yeah. I will sometimes tap on a particular point for some, but because we're tapping all the points, it's, we generally don't worry too much about which point is for which emotion. Brad, how did you get interested in this and pursue it as a career and become an expert, a well-known international expert in the field? How does a grown man find himself <laughs> tapping on his face? Hey. <laughs> I, I actually, I started as an actor, so what? I had, had a degree in drama. I traveled the world doing theater. Then I decided it was time to go to Hollywood to become a movie star as one does <laughs> while I was there pursuing that my few gigs. I'm not a doctor, but I played one on TV, <laughs> helped save Sammy's life on, that, on Days of Our Lives. I was going to say anything we know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, now we want episodes. I've heard this. <laughs> Had a line with Robert Downey Jr. and, oh, and wow. Chaplin. And, um, oh, very cool. But along the way, I met Christy and uh, fell in love, got married. And Aww. when our first child was on the way, I thought she'd probably have a backup career. <laughs> and I'd always been fascinated by the power of the mind. So I saw an ad for hypnotherapy school. And I thought, mm -hmm. hey, that would be really cool. So I started doing that. And was building hypnotherapy practice while also continuing my acting career. And a couple of years later, when our second child was on the way, I realized that as much as I'd loved acting, this was what I was here for. This was my mm. calling to do personal development work. And I, through some other hypnotherapists, I heard about this tapping thing and this energy psychology conference going on. And this guy, Gary Craig, doing this workshop on EFT. And I thought, hey, what the heck? And I know that a lot of people, first time they see tapping, think that's really weird. But in my career as an actor, I had gone to Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Clown College. So this was not the strangest thing I'd ever done. So yeah. <laughs> I had an easier time being open to it. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> and just f thought the process was fascinating, especially when in a matter of moments, we tapped away chocolate cravings. I'd been a bit of a chocoholic. And in a matter of just a couple of minutes of tapping, I couldn't eat chocolate and I didn't eat chocolate for two years. So I had started introducing that into my hypnotherapy sessions until little by little, they became tapping sessions with a little bit of hypnosis at the end. And then YouTube came along and it, it was pretty new at the time that I found it. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if there was a tapping video that people could start their day with to help them have a good day? I'll call it tap of the morning. And... <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one. I was, and that like, was that's hilarious. That was all I intended to do. It was like, okay, I have a video on YouTube. Yay. Now I'm done. It was six months later. I thought I should have one to end the day and I'll call it tap of the evening. And then I'm done. <laughs> and then I had another idea and another one. And now there's 1,200 or something. Wow. And 42 amazing. million views. That's incredible. Yeah. That is incredible. So when thinking about this, because you got into this as an actor and then you moved into doing it as a profession and you work with a lot of entrepreneurs, how does this relate and work with entrepreneurs? I went and looked at your YouTube and I was like, oh, there's some really cool stuff on mindset. So what can entrepreneurs use this technique for to help them in business and life and et cetera? As human beings, we resist change. When we really? face any kind of change, we <laughs> have a stress say. response. So if I'm an entrepreneur, 
just leaving my nine to five job is change. And so I might have a lot of stress. And in terms of creating an ideal life, stress is not real help. Also, being successful is a change. Making more money is a change. So there are parts of us that will resist that. And we won't even know it. I like to say that self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. Ooh, we, I love we, that like, quote. That's a yeah, mic drop. That quote. is. Right Can there. you say that again, Brad? Yeah, one more time for the sound clip. <laughs> a deep attention. <laughs> self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. Wow. When we screw up, when we don't get that report done, when we forget to make that phone call, when we don't meet our numbers, whatever it is, all those little things that we d don't do to reach those goals that we have, not even setting goals, that, that's self-sabotage in our career. And then we beat ourselves up. We go, oh, I should have done this. I'm so stupid. I'm so lazy. I'm so no, it's an act of self-love because something inside us is saying, it's not safe to get that opportunity. It's not safe to make that much money. It's not safe to be more successful than my parents were. It's not safe to have a career that my friends are going to be envious of. Because they're going to their nine to five jobs and I'm sitting here doing what I want to do on my time. I better at least be suffering. Otherwise, they're not going to like me anymore. So we have all of these brilliant ways to stop ourselves because when we consider that that success, it feels dangerous to us. And so we have a stress response and we're not even aware of it. We're just sitting there going through our day going, gee, I didn't get as much done today. I wonder why that is. Because every time we started to try to do something that would actually move the needle in the right direction, something inside of us says, stop, go get something to eat. Did you check that show on Netflix that everybody's been talking about? Because you don't want to be left out. So that's just a subtle stress response that's going on. Now, if only there was something we could do about stress. <laughs> Tapping calms that stress down so that when we think about the goal that we want, if we think about the success we want as an entrepreneur, we can tap to calm down that stress and we start to feel greater freedom to succeed. We're able to take those actions. We start to open our minds to new ideas that we hadn't even thought of. There's all kinds of amazing things that can happen as we calm down that stress. So that's why it's such an important tool for giving us that freedom to succeed. Wow. That was like, I'm yeah. like, I know me too. <laughs> and seen. That was I, amazing. <laughs> wow. That was really good. We have a tapping. I hate to just say, hey, there's this great technique. And now you've got to go and look things up and, and find it because <laughs> People will have resistance. Yeah. And so if we just end it there, folks will go, yeah, that sounds great. And a lot of folks will go, oh, I'll look that up when I have time. When I find the time. We don't find time. We have to make the time. And if, we, and if there's any part of it that says, oh, there's a simple technique that can help me clear stress and be much more successful and put me into all the kinds of danger that I've been trying to avoid so desperately for so long, I'm not looking that up. <laughs> exactly. What look, I was just thinking, and I wanted to say something about the resistance. One of the things that I noticed when I did your tapping to try it, I had a hard time, like my mind didn't want to focus on it. It wanted to resist it. And I was run like, away. well, this is interesting. Run, run. And so I the can unknown. totally see where that resistance is that you maybe don't even understand, assuming you repeat back what you were saying on the video and then you tap. And yeah. my brain wanted to go a different route. I was like, oh, look at that. Isn't that interesting? So is that the resistance that, is that like a typical resistance you see when someone starts this? Yeah. Yeah. And see, when you had that resistance, but you stayed with it because you felt this obligation to know what I'm about before interviewing me. For well, a lot I was of intrigued. People, Honestly, yeah. I was really intrigued. For a lot of other folks, there won't be enough motivation to push past that, that initial resistance. If I was ever to do a TED Talk, the title would be, Your Self-Sabotage is Brilliant, Now <laughs> Knock It Off. <laughs> so every time you stop yourself and, you, and if you think, oh, yeah, the tapping thing sounds interesting, I'll go look that up at some point, and then you don't, um, or you get distracted and you watch a few minutes and go, ah, oh, that's not for me. 
it's brilliant because part of you is saying this could get me in trouble because part of you thinks that being more successful will be trouble. Yeah. And it will wow. to some extent. It will be it, life is always going to have issues. It's just a higher grade of issues. So let me ask you this. I'm a big meditator and a lot of meditators, they start the day with meditation. As far as tapping sessions, do you do it at a certain time? Do you do it when something comes up? But how do you recommend it? There's no wrong way to do it. I start my day doing tapping. Now, to clear things up, for, for a lot of people who know about EFT, the basic idea is you take something that's distressing you. I feel all this stress. I have this tension in my shoulders. I'm really angry at Bob because he's such a jerk. Whatever it might be. And so you would, and you start by tapping on the side of the hand with your fingertips saying, even though I have this stress or even though I have this tension in my shoulders or even though I'm really angry at Bob, so you, you state that uncomfortable feeling. It's not that I start tapping in the morning because I wake up grumpy. <laughs> it's another day, even though it's another day. Because tapping is just clearing out stress. And so for me, it's if there's anything that I might be resisting, any resistance that I might be carrying from yesterday, I want to clear that out. I want to be as open as possible. So I do positive tapping. I'll tap while saying affirmations. I'll tap while saying prayers. Mm -hmm. things like that. Sometimes I'll just tap while saying, thank you for the blessings that I have. Thank you for the blessings I'm receiving. And mm -hmm. just puts me in a positive place. And I'm clearing out anything that might get in the way of good things coming my way. And then throughout the day, if there's something that does bother me, like if I'm driving and somebody cuts me off, I don't want to carry that stress with me. <laughs> I know you have courses and you give the prompts, but if somebody just spontaneously wants to tap, you can say anything that you want to. Or nothing. If you're, if you're in a moment of stress, somebody cuts you off, somebody yells at you, you see something distressing on the news, you probably don't need to say anything because your body's already aware. It's okay, check in. How do I feel? I have this tension in my shoulders. I've got this knot in my stomach. Rated on a scale of zero to 10. And you don't have to go through all this. If you're already feeling stressed, you can just go ahead and start tapping. And you can tap through all the points. If you just feel like tapping one point, I may just stop on a particular point and just intuitively feel, yeah, that's where I should be tapping right now. And there are subtle places you can tap the side of the hand that we start with. You can be doing that under the table. I was working with a pro golfer once and he was, as he was lining up his shot, he would just subtly be holding the golf club in one hand and gently tapping the other mm, hand that no one cool. could see. So. So you can subtly tap in different places where if you're around other people, I'm looking forward to the day where everybody knows about tapping. And so people will just be out in public tapping and you might say, oh yeah, that's, I have some stress too. I should tap too. It'll be just a general reminder and people won't say, oh, look at that crazy person. That's why I did a video in Times Square and I just shot another one at my local Starbucks, just sitting out in front, people walk in and out past me. So whenever something distressing comes up, Allow yourself to tap at that time to, to clear stuff out, whether you're saying different words. And when we go through the tapping points, you can, the basic version of EFT is you just repeat the same thing. So you tap the side of the hand and say, even though I have this stress, I choose to love and accept myself. Then you would tap right at the beginning of your eyebrow and say, all this stress. We generally tap these points between five and 10 times, but it's not an exact science, so don't worry about counting. Right here at the side of the eye, all this stress. Right under the middle of your eye, all this stress. Right under your nose, all this stress. Right under your lower lip, just above your chin, all this stress. Right where your collarbones just about come together, there's a little U-shape at the base of your throat. And you can use all of your fingertips or even make a fist and tap over that, all this stress. And about four inches below your arm. It's right about bra strap level. And I'm sure even the guys can figure out where that is. All that stress. And then finally, the top of your head. So using all of your fingertips, just tapping around the crown of your head. All this stress. Then you take a deep breath. And you check in again. So if your level of stress was at an eight and you felt it in your shoulders, you might check, how do my shoulders feel? What's it at now? And we might go from an eight to a zero like that. 
more often it takes a little bit more time. Sometimes we may just go from an 8 to a 7.75. But even that little bit of relief is going to give us a little bit more breathing space. And then we can go back through it, even though I still have some stress, all this remaining stress, all this remaining stress, and bring it down as low as we can. What also happens is it's often like peeling the layers of an onion. So as we're tapping through, we start to get more clarity about what's bothering us. All this stress, all, oh, you know what I'm really stressed about is this report that's due next week and I haven't started it yet and I've been totally putting it off and that's why I'm getting worried. And then we'll be tapping this worry about this report, this worry about this. Oh, you know why? Because in the third grade, I got that bad grade on a report card. And I got in so much trouble about that. And that's why I've got this tension right now. And I can clear out decades of stress that I've been hanging on to. Oh, my goodness. I need to tap every doing, day. I'm going to start doing this. Like, I'm going to become your number one fan on YouTube. <laughs> I just thought, as you're saying this, my brain is going, oh, my God, the benefits to this, health benefits, mental mm-hmm. benefits, physical uh, benefits. Just the dropping the cortisol itself in your body, the amount of benefits. There are crazy research that has been done that has shown biological markers of um, stress coming down, the cortisol, the stress hormone dropping significantly 20, 30, 40% sometimes, reported levels of happiness going up, Mm. depression and anxiety coming down, immune, immune system being boosted. There are ways of measuring this biologically with different chemical markers that they've done. Uh, there are fMRI studies where you can see the brain activity and see the difference that's happening. So it's scientifically validated. And yes, there are every aspect of life can do this. And that's why I recommend tapping on a daily basis. It's, mm-hmm. it's energy hygiene. We have mm-hmm. physical hygiene, like brushing our teeth or taking a shower. I like that energy and, hygiene. And we don't go for three weeks. And then wait till people are holding their nose around us and going, I'm taking a shower in a while. <laughs> Looking in the mirror and going, oh, there's green stuff coming up between mm-hmm. my teeth. I should probably brush my teeth now. We do it as maintenance on a daily basis yeah. before it's obvious that we need it. But with stress, most of us have no way of dealing with it or we have unhealthy ways of dealing with it. And so to me, it's I, I want to start my day and I want to spend at least a lot of time every day clearing that stress because it builds just like the gunk on your teeth or the dirt on your body. It's going to build over time and get worse if you don't mitigate it. Quick question. And I know it differs. And obviously, like you said, it can go down from an eight to 7.5 or from a 10 to a five. But if somebody wanted to just start on a daily basis, just to tap, what is the minimum time that you would suggest somebody does tap? The minimum I would say is just do a full round from eyebrow down. And some people will start with the top of the head and then go down to under the arm. When I first learned EFT, the top of the head was not an official point being used at that point, but a friend of mine was using that. So she taught me that. And I just ending it, it's like ending on a high. But you can, if it's easier for folks to remember, just go from head down to the arm. Okay. And any amount of tapping you do is better than. Mm. I'm thinking of all the things in my I know. life that I can now apply this to. Like, I know. Let's see. Why do you think I have over a thousand videos on YouTube and, <laughs> I, and more coming? I have a new uh, video coming out each week. There's no end to the things that we can tap. This on. could save so many marriages just alone. The amount of right. triggers with food, triggers with money, triggers with relationships, triggers for anything in your life. You can stop if you're aware and be like, oh, wait, let's just take a minute. Let's just take a minute and relax. And it'll take everything down a notch. Just and life down. will be so much more pleasant to be in. That's what I'm saying. That- <laughs> That's why I do this. That's why I go on YouTube. Oops, Making a fool it. of myself to, in the eyes of many people. I have this blue wristband that says cultivate peace. Aww, That's my job. I love that. I love cultivate that. peace and th- peace through clearing out what doesn't feel like peace. If it's okay with you guys, I'd like to do a quick round for entrepreneurs. Yeah. Let's do it. This is so fun. Yay. Okay. Now that I've shown you the basic version where you just repeat the same words on every point, now we're going to have some fun with it. Do you have to do them out loud or just to yourself? It's best if you say it out loud. Sometimes when I'm doing an interview or on a podcast, the 
folks won't do it because of the video. But if you guys want to say it out loud, that's fine. I'm going to mute so that you can talk. Yeah. But I'll invite everyone watching or listening and I'll say the points. I'll repeat the points for those who may just be listening without the visuals. And, uh, but say it out loud because when we speak out loud, we tend to be more emotionally engaged and that helps the process be more effective. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and first of all, close your eyes, take a deep breath. Just allow yourself to be present, just following your breath to your body and just checking in with how you're feeling right now. Maybe rating yourself on a scale of zero to 10. 10 is magnificent. Don't judge yourself harshly if the number is lower than that. Just allow yourself to get curious about what might stop you from being a 10. And also, thinking about the success that you want to create. Imagine, focusing this for entrepreneurs, imagine your career the way you really want it. How much money are you making? How often are you working? What kind of time off do you take? Who are you meeting? Who are you spending time with? Go ahead and imagine yourself at your, in your ideal career, having your ideal level of success. Just following your breath, your body, noticing how you feel, say, it's safe for me to have this level of success. And rate that on a scale of zero to 10. 10 being, oh yeah, it's totally safe. Now, if you're telling yourself it's a 10 and you're not already experiencing that level of success, I'm going to say, check again, because you might be kidding yourself. (laughs) Because the extent to which we don't have what we say we want tends to be the extent to which we are resisting it. And we resist things because they don't feel safe at some level. So just you may not be consciously aware of why it might not feel safe. But just allow yourself to be aware of what you might feel in your body. Think about the actions that you could take that would create this career. What are the things that you could be doing that would move the needle in the direction of this level of success? As you imagine taking those actions, notice how much resistance might be there. Because unless you can say, I'm doing absolutely everything I can do every day, I'm doing what it takes. Just allow yourself to be aware. There might be some resistance there. It's not because you're bad or stupid, weak or lazy. You just have resistance. Just allowing yourself to be aware of where that might be. Take a deep breath. Open your eyes. And tap where I tap and repeat back what I say. So tap it on the side of your hand. Even though I might be resisting more success, I choose to love and accept myself. Even though I might be resisting greater success, I choose to love and honor myself. Even though I might be resisting greater success, although part of me says I'm not, I am totally open to fantastic success And every day I'm doing all that I can to make that happen. But if it's not happening exactly the way I want it, I choose to be open to the possibility. Part of me might have some resistance. And if I'm not tapping right now along with this, That's a good sign that I have some resistance. (laughs) And even though I might be resisting greater success, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who might contribute to this resistance. Eyebrow point. All this resistance to greater success. Side of your eye. All this resistance to greater success. Under the eye. All this fear of greater success. 
under the nose. Part of me says, I'm not afraid of success. Under the mouth. But I'm probably stopping myself in some ways. Collarbone. And that's because I have some resistance. Under the arm. It's because I have some fear. Top of the head. Because when I imagine success, eyebrow point, my mind thinks of some downsides. Sadly, I'll have to pay more in taxes. Out of the eye. It'll take up all of my time. Under the nose. My friends and family might be jealous. Under the mouth. I'll have to deal with more customer complaints. Collarbone. By virtue of the fact that I'll have more customers. Under the arm. So while part of me says. Top of the head. More success is definitely what I want. Eyebrow point. Another part of me says, this would create headaches that I definitely don't want. Out of the eye, greater success would mean more trouble. Out of the nose. And so I brilliantly stop myself. Out of the mouth. Sometimes I make mistakes. Collarbone. And then I beat myself up. Under the arm. Can't believe I didn't follow through on that. Top of the head. I can't believe I stopped myself from reaching that goal. Eyebrow point. I should feel bad about that. Side of the eye. And that's brilliant too. Under the eye. Because if I'm trying to avoid greater success, under the nose, wasting my time beating myself up, out of mouth, is a really good way to avoid success. Collarbone. And I choose to knock that off now. Under the, I can handle success. Top of the head. I can handle much greater success. Eyebrow. I am a magnificent child of the universe. Side of the eye. I am worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. Under the eye, there is nothing that is too good for me. Under the nose, and I have gifts and talents to share. Under the mouth, and I want to share them as much as possible. Call them on. So I'm releasing any old resistance. Under the eye, setting myself free to really succeed. Top of the head, in body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. And with your eyes closed, just allow yourself to think about those places where you might have been feeling resistance. Now imagining your ideal career and say, it's safe for me to have this much success. And hopefully that feels much more true. And again, it's like peeling layers of the onion. So you may have had other memories or beliefs that might have come up. And then you can go and tap specifically to clear those. Please and thank you because your success benefits the world because you have gifts and talents to share. That was amazing. And did you feel I, any resistance, Sandy? I did. I'm willing to share mine if you're willing to share yours. <laughs> It's funny because I've t I haven't tapped regularly. I did your challenge and in the past, I don't think I've ever done it except for the challenge properly. And I did have resistance, but I, when I really let go, 
I could feel an energy shift. I could feel resistance dissipate. I could feel, you know what? Like, honestly, for the first time in a long time, because my success isn't where I want it to be, I really felt and I envisioned myself what it looks like because I have this vision. I saw myself and for the first time it felt like, this is really going to happen. It was very profound, actually. Like, it's really going to happen, not just it's a vision. So when I was going through it, I had a lot of resistance around belief. It was very interesting. I felt myself stumbling on those sections, and I was having a hard time getting the verbiage out, or I wouldn't, the tap wasn't right. I could feel the resistance towards it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. And it was very subtle because I just felt the resistance of, oh, I wasn't tapping correctly there. So what was, what did he just say? And I could tell that there was some pushback to the belief. But then as I went through, I felt myself release and feel more at ease with it. And then I felt, oh, okay. Yes, this is possible. Yeah. It's possible. And that's how that's a shift I had from maybe not or to it's possible, which is very interesting. I thought it was I thought it was I'm going to start doing this every day for sure. I was going to say I'm going to do this one. We have the recording. Every day. Yeah, this one will be out there for you all to do every single day and he'll have it on his YouTube. So you can go to his YouTube and do it every single day. It's interesting what you're saying there, because that's so brilliant. That, that opening thing. Of, am I tapping the point right? That fear of getting it wrong is such a huge thing for a lot of us. That's one of the things that blocks us as entrepreneurs. I've got to get my webpage up, but it has to be right. I can't put something up that's not right. And we're so afraid of making mistakes. So there's that two parts there. One is the fear of making a mistake. And two, the fear that if I allow myself to tap, what will that open up for me and create Mm -hmm. change in my life? So it's totally reasonable to have this fear of getting it wrong. And I should probably just not, I should probably stop right now and not mess with this whole tapping thing. Stay safe. Brilliant. And as, but as you kept tapping, because you felt obliged because we're here on this call, (laughs) it's, it just starts working and the relaxation starts to happen. Oh, just get over yourself. I felt an actual difference in my demeanor. I felt more relaxed, Yeah, which I, for someone who has a lot of anxiety and is very amped up a lot, that is a very good tool for me just to take myself down a notch because I have, I think, cortisol, take that cortisol back to where it should be versus where I probably live in. <laughs> yeah, the energetic shift I've never experienced. It's It was really interesting. But I've also never said these words. And I think the words are, I think the words are more important than I actually thought they were. I thought it wasn't as much about the words as it was about the tapping, but it's really goes hand in hand, I think. They are both crucial components of the process. I want to say crucial because you can get benefits from the tapping if you're not saying words. And certainly there's plenty of personal development that doesn't include tapping and and is beneficial. So the words and the tapping can be mutually exclusive, but combined is where the real profound change happens. I think it's another tool like meditation, right? It's just, it's another tool that's very effective, but I just never really got it. And this just shifted that. So thank you for that. (laughs) Well, for me, I like this because I struggle with meditation. I'm not like Sandy, I'm getting better at it. For me, meditation is a lot of brain stuff happening, but this it allows me to have an active brain while really dealing with what's going on in my brain. So that I really like this technique for someone like myself. This has been amazing. I both every morning, but yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Moment of stress. I find that it's much easier if something stressful happens, like you've just had a real, you've had an argument with somebody. It's going to be much easier to just go like this and to say, okay, I'm going to sit down for 10 (laughs) minutes and just chill. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> because you're gonna be, your mind is racing. And so in this- the car, if you get frustrated, you can't really say, oh, I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to. So yeah, absolutely. I love yeah. this. Yeah. And I never it- looked at it like that. So this was really my first introduction. I had heard of it, but I'd never really played with it. And I have to say, I love it. So thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a real honor to learn from you.
knowing your prestige. You're one of the leading one of the best in the world on this. So the fact that we got a front row seat with someone of your caliber <laughs> is amazing. So thank no. you so much. Thanks. I'm just a guy who taps on his face. Okay. <laughs> Very blessed to get to introduce this. And I, I am grateful to the both of you for what you're doing and helping folks. And thank you for this opportunity to share this. And yeah, thank you to everyone who took the time to listen to this. And I hope you find it useful. Absolutely. And I'm super happy to spread the tapping love because I just think it's brilliant and I think it can help so many people. So thank you. Thank you. We'll have all the information in the show notes. Thank you again so much, Brad. This has been a real honor.